Scott, uh, thanks for joining us here at Aero News and Airborne and such, and especially with our 15th year of AEA Live coverage. Tell us what you're doing here. Yeah, hey, always a pleasure, Jim. Um, we're, um, you know, we're we're here at the show basically with you know our our base product, which is you know our fuel level senders, which you know for by and large for these you know the installer base are are uh, they get installed along with you know new engine monitor systems, you know, and, and all of these retrofits that are happening. You know, and we're here to support that installer base. But basically, things are going where we're getting nothing but compliments, and mm-hmm. and, and that's a you know, it, it feels good to be patted on the back occasionally. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. We've uh, we sometimes also, few and far between in this. <laughs> sometimes that happens. Um, eh, you're going through some of the issues and problems, and learning about other applica- other uh, platforms, other aircraft that people see a need for us to be applied to and working out those arrangements. Uh, we also have our uh, throttle um, that was um, that we developed and we showed last year at this show. Um, there's a video out there that we put on LinkedIn that uh, shows it being operated on the Safran engine and the EP uh, power systems cart. Um, basically tried to abuse our throttle uh, with uh, no negative results on our part. Oh, you have to let me out if you want abuse. Oh, I, I'm I'm equally as bad. I can break most anything. Yeah, but um, the uh, Safran engineers tried to induce all sorts of uh, anomalies, and thankfully we've been in the business long enough and learned enough with using basically the same technology on the fuel level sender to, mm-hmm. to avoid any normal issues you would find. We're also working with Stratus, uh, the jet manufacturer in the uh, in uh, the Central Oregon area, and working on some of their flight controls and some of the things that they're doing. And they're they're planning on flying their prototype aircraft here this spring. Okay, uh, they've uh, got an interesting plan for them. I'm, I'm curious to see what the business model is ultimately going to look like like everything in this industry. There are things that we thought were gonna take off and do really well and other things that kind of fell flat in its face. And you really don't know because ultimately market changes, this, that, and the other. We wish them the best of luck because the work I've seen done on it here before has been stunning. So we'll see. It, it's, it's a project near and dear to my heart, Jim, because uh, basically when I uh, was looking for something new to do, uh, I would see Karsten in the coffee shop and. Karsten was designing something, you know, uh, basically they use... Sail planes to jets. No, well, yes, <laughs> but, um, and, and I've flown with Karsten several times, so we, we, have a good, we have a good professional relationship as well as personal, and uh, Carson would, you know, brush ideas off of me because I was a captured, knowledgeable audience about, you know, would it be worthwhile? And the, the example would be, their use of steel structure behind the the aircraft pressure bulkhead to support the engine and mm-hmm. uh, and the tail structure. So I remember those conversations quite well. So I have a soft spot soft spot for helping friends out. He had a need to make some systems on that aircraft jet level. Mm-hmm. Well, I wish them nothing but the best of luck because. Uh First of all, it's, it's, it's a beautiful you know, platform. It's just absolutely gorgeous, and sometimes uh, function follows form. We'll see how that works out in the long run. We will. Um, uh, the, finally, we've gotten a log jam break in the FAA. So we'll, we were hoping to announce a new product here at the show. Um, isn't isn't going to make it, but it will make Oshkosh. Okay. And so we actually have a next generation fuel sender. Oh, uh, the, now you got my attention. The fuel sender has um, uh, differing outputs. Uh, one of those to address CAN bus. Um, uh, from 2008 on, Cessna used the CAN bus sensor mm-hmm. uh, in their single engine uh, propeller line of aircraft. 
and that product is getting difficult, if not impossible, to, to source and locate. So we'll have a solution for that coming up. But um, with that, it also has you know, other- How many frames do you think that affects? 172s, 182s, 206s, oh, caravans. Thousands. Yeah, gotcha, okay. That yeah. sounds like a nice market. And I've got people uh, asking. They're, they're having to shut down aircraft for flight schools oh, no, because yeah. of availability. So that's you know a sensitive topic for me. You know, I'm all, I, I, uh, my employees, uh, as a benefit, can get free training that I pay for uh, for for their pilot's license. And I like to see, you know, I like to see uh, in my employees younger people engaged in aviation. So not having flying uh, training aircraft is something I'm sensitive to. Good for you. But it'll have, the new unit has uh, dynamic damping so that, you know, uh, it's hard to tell some pilots that fuel moves when they taxi around. No, I won't have to do that. Um, surprise. Surprise. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. It, it'll have pitch compensation. So uh, it'll have everything that wow. a airliner type fuel quantity system has. You're, brought, making, you're making it too easy, Scott brought down to you know the level that we've been very active we've we've crossed over last year over a hundred thousand fuel senders in the field and um, that pace continues to accelerate so what once was a foreign idea that you could actually measure fuel in small aircraft or that it could be accurate at something other than zero um, especially the way some of us flew so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know, we're, it, it's no longer a, a fringe concept. It's actually what, what's the expected. Once, ex once we all graduated from the little Piper Cub fuel indicator, from yeah. there on out, it was just a series of nightmares that had to be dealt with. Oh my Lord. Yeah. Well, you've done some extraordinary work in the industry because uh, I'm familiar with where some of your products have, have gone and what they've replaced and how the complaint ratio decreased as a result. So, neat stuff. One thing I always wanted to know, what is the genesis of the, of the company name? What does that come from? SICE, so it's a, it's a funny piece. Um, if, if you know I was me, hoping it was. <laughs> if you know me, uh, after I left Gulfstream and decided to be a ski bum in Central Oregon, I worked for a company, Hard Pre work. Precise Flight, and uh, precise flight. Um, I, I worked on developing the speed brakes. I worked on developing, you know, a lot of systems on Cirrus aircraft and in the former uh, Columbia aircraft because I was bored, um, <laughs> basically. And, um, and I got got a reputation in the GA industry for my capabilities. And you know, the the downturn in the economy in 2008. You know. Uh, uh, Lowering tide exposes a few more barnacles in a, in a, a, a partnership than you want to find. And um, it was time for me to go. So I was going, thinking about it and going, well, I was at precise flight. Well, why don't I just be now at SICE? And then retirement will be post-SICE. <laughs> <laughs> and, I and, love it. <laughs> and, and I had was, not heard the and, story before. And I was, was curious. And it was a Especially joke. Especially after I learned how to pronounce it the first time. Yeah, it was a joke. And then I then it then it becomes looking at GoDaddy. I wonder if that's available. And yeah, it was. Gee, there's a surprise. And um, and it's it is also interesting to me because people, like you said, don't know how to pronounce it. We're up for Oregon Technology Award. We're a finalist for Oregon Tech Company of the Year. Which is a, I is a great honor. I'm really very happy for my team that that we're being considered. But the the number of people having active discussions about how you pronounce our name has been more beneficial, I believe. Oh yeah. You, you know, talk bad about me. Talk good about, about me. But for God's sakes, talk, talk about, about me. me. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it's always like you you thought from a marketing standpoint. And I'm not. I'm an engineer, not a marketer. But you know uh, something I think, I that think would to be, differ based on what I've seen so far. But go ahead. But you know something that's easy. You know, um, 
that you know you can't mistake is one thing. But I have guys coming to me at Oshkosh or at Sun and Fun, you know, having ongoing arguments that must have gone through the evening of how to pronounce our company, and I think that's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> really worthwhile so what's the future for you guys right now um we're we're really delving hard into uh, I've, i'm pushing the guys to say hey we've done this with uh, position sensors and embedded software you know let's look at some other sensor technologies you know um, where people are having issue um, like pressure sensors um, you know other uh, other uh, other Sensor applications where an intelligent sensor is an important uh, addition. Uh, we're doing, uh, we're bidding on several military projects the, for, oh, fuel, for fuel <laughs> caches. Um, but again, we have to convince people that a float will work. Yeah. Um, uh, we've, we've crossed that Rubicon and GA, but we still have some, uh, we have some work there. Um, we're, we're continuing to um, add to our OEM list. There's a significant OEM ad that we'll have this summer. Um, okay. And so that's there. Sounds like you guys are going to be making a lot of news this summer. Yeah. And then we have a few uh, skunk work projects that I'm not at liberty to talk about, but are equally uh, fun and exciting. and. Hopefully, no engineers will be hurt in the exercise. So, um, we're my guys are having fun. Um, I really, I really enjoy my team. They know that they're making a significant difference mm -hmm. in safety in aviation. You can see that. You can see that in the way they carry themselves. They're doing a great job on working. You know that consortium with Diamond and EP Systems and. Safran, they're getting nothing but um, accolades from you know co senior colleagues of my um, gestation in, in this industry, and, and I'm really proud of, of the team and what they're doing. Outstanding. Well, congratulations on everything we've seen so far. Um, any last words? No, I'm uh, really happy. Happy to be here. Happy. Really happy with my customer base, the installers, and they're uh, getting getting the thank yous that we get at these shows are worth uh, are, are worth millions to me. Well, that's the best part of events like this is that you're with the people you work with, you buy from, they sell to, whatever the case may be, and being able to do the face to face, be able to do it in a pleasant environment, and in the context of watching everybody else do the same thing, it provides a somewhat homogenized view of where everything is going, who's doing well, and why. And can I emulate that, or even better, top that. Yeah. Uh, this is a great incubator for good ideas. Also a great incubator for looking at what hasn't worked and, okay, run, run like hell from that one. <laughs> there's, there's a few of those here. There. Yeah, there are those ideas. Well, thankfully, in my career, I've been able to avoid most of them. Well, I'll tell you what, that makes you the rare exception because... Uh, from journalism on down to avionics, I, I, we've all got our blunder stories. And, man, we've got a bunch of them, right, T? <laughs> hey, it's, so, it's one of those things I tell my guys. It's aviation. You get to learn something new every day, whether you wanted to or oh, not. Yeah, it's, it's definitely drinking from the fire hose all the time. Yeah. Well, Scott, I, I appreciate you spending time with us. I am going to absolutely demand that we talk before Oshkosh to get an update on what's happening and be prepared for the news that you have at Oshkosh. We'll, of course, keep your secrets up to and through announcements, but uh, the big thing we're looking to do is just make sure that, like we do at Sun and Fun and like we do at MBAA and AUVSI and AEA and all the rest, that we go into Oshkosh and just cover it like nobody else and have, and have a ball. We yeah. drag about 30 people out there, so it's always kind of a real interesting event from just organizational standpoints. And this year should be fun. With Sun and Fun up about 20%, even Oshkosh is saying they're expecting a much better year. So more power to you. Congrats so far. And more important, kick a little ass at Oshkosh. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated.
Aero News Network's coverage of the 66th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Orlando, Florida, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. 